Hello, everybody. This is Uncle Bruce with Simple Economics, and I'm here again today with Juvenal. How are you doing, Juvenal? Hi, Bruce. I'm so good, man. I can complain, and uh, I hope everyone is safe at home. Yes. Uh, and thanks to, to have me again. I will have you many times, if you let me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Juvenal, what is our topic today? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's a quite interesting uh, assumption. Is about uh, some exotic investments. Um, you know, we are living in a in a time that uh, uh, everybody is looking for some investments to do in order to raise their their incomes. And uh, okay, I I, I thought that uh, would be. I don't know, useful because you know it's a kind of investment so strange. Mm -hmm. But uh, just to talk about um, uh, about uh, of, uh, other kind of uh, investments to do. Okay, so uh, can you explain to people what you mean by exotic investments? Yeah, so you know this this, this kind of investment is so different than uh, investments we are used to, to see, to, to listen about, or to do. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stocks, in despite of there are some uh, company stocks that's very different as well. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so, you know, some funds, hedge funds, or even gold, you know, mm -hmm. But there are another another kind of investments that uh, is not so usual for, usual for the the majority of people, like um, to buy and sell or to collect rare whiskey, for mm. example. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm looking at the chart right now, and that is one of the highest ones on the chart is rare whiskey. Yes, yes, I prefer to drink. But uh, that, <laughs> you don't want to save that, it for a rainy day, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, there are some experts in this in this uh, in this assumption, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, there are some uh, how can I say some some stars, some uh, whiskey that uh, is so uh, desirable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. Uh, of course, it depends on the, the age, on the, the period that uh, this whisk was uh, done. Mm -hmm. And uh, all this, this stuff, you know, brings some more value to this, to this uh, product. Okay. So I think this is the, the main concept behind these investments. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking here and I see um, stamps. I collect stamps. Oh yeah. Yes. Um, I'm yeah. not an act. I'm real active, but I have a large stamp collection. Uh, many mm -hmm. American stamps, but also international places like Brazil. You know, so I have stamps from around the world, and I mm -hmm. like to look at the stamps. Stamps to me are very interesting because they have pictures and designs from. They're the country that they were the stamps are from, and also other countries. Like there are many countries that have stamps with Elvis Presley, mm -hmm. are, um, or Disney characters, and so it's very interesting how stamps are created uh, to normally commemorate somebody or some place or some time. So I like to collect stamps, and so I can see that it has a a six percent uh, annual. Uh, increase in value. So that's cool. I've got stamps that are old and that makes them even more valuable and 64% for a 10 year period. So that's yeah. very good. That's very good. Yeah. So do you collect anything right now? You know, uh, when I was reading this text, uh, I, I realized that uh, I should be very rich right now because I had uh, when I was young, man, uh, thirty years ago, the, the the number one comic book of X Men. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow! But, uh, you know, you know, in a certain time of my life, I decided to 
to let it down, to let it down, no, to just to, you know, uh, to give some to someone. Oh, you gave it to I someone. Did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool, cool. So it's crazy. It's crazy. You no, know, that's not listed here. The comic books are not listed here, but I know comic books have a lot of value because people like yes. to collect them and have the total set, you know, the total collection of uh -huh. some group. So I know that they have good value. Yeah, imagine the honor of the, the number one comic book of uh, Mickey Mouse, for example. <laughs> <laughs> you yes. know, it's, yeah, it's rare. And uh, maybe this, this, this guy uh, uh, might be rich right now. But Probably. yeah, but it, there is another another interesting point. Uh, I think the majority of uh, people that invest in this kind of uh, uh, you know stuff mm -hmm. um, maybe they prefer to own these things instead of uh, sell or buy or you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I, I think that that uh, there is some emotional uh, behavior behind this. Mm -hmm. Like you as a, a collector of uh, stamps, because for example, stamps, I think stamps uh, tell us um, some stories in a timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you, when you buy or you cut some stamp, um, at that time, uh, when this stamp was launched and uh, the period, the story, you know, uh, you know, it's quite interesting because uh, stamps will not launch it again. This, this, this Correct. stamp will not uh, relaunch it. Yes, that's true. So looking at this list here, I can see some other areas very interesting. One is cars. Do you do you have a, a collectible car or do you have a common car? No, no, I don't have it. I used to to collect CDs, but uh -huh. uh, I think until now is not a very rare product. So, but I like music. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do too. Uh, I have a, I, I have a big collection I don't use anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because now I use Spotify. <laughs> I use Spotify. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I digitalized it mm -hmm. uh, some years ago. All my 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 CDs I have around uh, a thousand. Wow. Uh, CDs, yeah, and uh, and other vinyls as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I digitalize it, and uh, I used to listen them because. You know, it's uh, it's my favorite songs, my favorite mm -hmm. uh, artists, musicians, and and kind of music. Yeah, well, think about it. In the future, those CDs will probably have more value because they don't create them anymore. And so people will say, "Yeah, I want that because of the cover art, you know, the art that they have for the the cover, and because they want the physical CD. They don't want to listen only to you know Spotify. Or maybe people think, oh." When I travel, I don't have good coverage with my Spotify account. And so I would mm -hmm. like to listen to some good music. I don't like to listen to the radio a lot because they don't have good music. You know, it's a lot of uh, other things that I don't want to listen to. So uh, it's very interesting. Uh, CDs could become very valuable again in the future. Yeah, it could be, could be. Well, but, you know, uh, 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 following this, this concept, you know, uh, for example, art. Art is something that... Uh, we used to listen that that uh, there is some there are some experts that buy and sell anytime and uh, maybe this is this is one of uh, the exotic investment uh, well known around the world. Mm -hmm. So yes. there are some yeah there are some paints for example mm -hmm. of uh, Picasso or Portinari or other guy that. Uh, you know, value worth mm -hmm. worth uh, right now some millions, yes. million, uh, millions of dollars. So yes, I can see coins are a good investment. Mm -hmm. Three percent on on the one year, 
and 175% over 10 years. So that's good. Mm -hmm. um, wine has 120% uh, over 10 years, 1% uh, for the year. Yeah. So one thing is interesting that furniture, <laughs> it's not a good investment. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't appreciate normally. Antique <laughs> furniture, okay, but furniture in general, no. It's like a car. When you when you take it out of the store, you just lost 10 to 20 percent of the value. You know, yeah. because, because the I'm just saying, because a car, you buy a new car, you're gonna lose 10 to 20 percent when you drive it off the part off the lot of the dealership. You know, when you with the yes. place where you buy the car, the dealership, when you drive it off the dealership uh, area, you just lost 10 to 20 percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So man, that 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 are uh, that are good investments, but uh, you know, it's this is only for the strong people or people that uh, has you know resistance to the risk because let's let's think about the uh, wine and that there there are some uh, uh, interesting points uh, here for example i think you should uh, listen about um, some nba players mm -hmm. like lebron james uh, if i'm not wrong uh, i don't i don't remember the, the, the name of the guy but there are some players uh, at the nba uh who are owners of uh vineyard mm -hmm. you know okay and uh yeah it's good it's a good business and mm -hmm. uh but uh it demands uh how can i say demands careful demands uh, a good vision of the market uh investments as well a continued mm -hmm. investment on the on the the growth of uh the plants and the improvement of the plants and new new blends and other stuff like that but yeah. uh when you get the right uh, how can i say when you when you have a good year, uh, the good fruits to to do your wine, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, good uh, brand, you can uh, make uh, good money. Not mm -hmm. only for the rich guys. I was reading other other day about uh, some guys in Europe. Uh, owners of vineyards that uh, rent a space in their vineyards um, to common people like you and me, like mm. you. And, and what would we do and, if we if we rented some space in the vineyard? What would we do with that space? That those you, grapes are ours. Yeah, you can you can decide what what type of uh, grape you oh. you can you you want to 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 to, to plant mm -hmm. not to plant to yeah to plant and grow to produce yeah mm -hmm. and uh what type of blend do you do you want to to produce mm -hmm. and uh these guys these owners of vineyards uh will help you with uh uh, uh, every technical issues you need. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not a, a, a farmer, so I don't know all the details about how to grow a good quality grape, you know, to create wine. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. This, yeah, very this exists interesting. in Brazil? No, it exists only in Europe. In uh, Europe, okay. Yeah. The, the article that I, I've read uh, was talking about Portugal. If mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I know that uh, people do collect cars. Um, there was a personality on TV in the United States called Jay Leno, the Jay Leno yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has a big him. collection of cars, big collection. Mm -hmm. So some people, they really, I mean, I do. I like Lamborghini, Maserati, uh, Porsche, uh, you know. <laughs> All the nice cars, <laughs> but I don't have the money. Okay, yeah, I don't have the yeah, money. yeah. 
So to have those cars, you need hundreds of thousands, probably millions of dollars to have a collection. You know, they're they're not cheap. Just a brand mm-hmm. new Lamborghini is probably, I don't know, two hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Some crazy money. Yes, yeah, it's very expensive because this, this these cars are uh, uh, a truly piece of art. <laughs> it's a piece of art yeah, as a car. A yes. Art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool cars. Um, and even uh, you know what I like to own in Brazil is a Corvette, a Chevrolet Corvette. Yeah. I would like to own a Corvette. Yeah, no, it... You know, a new one. Uh, or a newer one, because I think uh-huh. they're a cool car. And it's American. I think it's a good American car. It'd be nice to have a Cadillac, yeah. too, but the Cadillac can be too big to drive down the road. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get it. There's some places you can't go with the Cadillac because it's kind of big, you know? Some of the, yeah, old, the old ones. In Brazil, the only problem is uh, to drive this, this, you know, preciosities in our streets. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, malfunctions in the in the streets. Yes, uh, we say potholes. 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 Yes. Yeah. And all so, the, the speed bumps and all the, the, the yeah, streets that are yeah, not yeah. maintained, all the bumps in the roads. Yeah, for sure. Will you damage your, your asset? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one thing I thought was interesting on this chart too is uh, the colored diamonds. I thought diamonds were all like crystal, you know, but there mm-hmm. are some diamonds that have color, like maybe a pink or a light blue. Yeah. I don't know. I think that uh, the, the rare gems, I think, are very nice, uh, like sapphires and rubies and emeralds. Mm-hmm. I think they're very mm-hmm. nice. And there's a lot of others like amethyst, lots of other um, types of rocks and minerals that people use for jewelry. Yeah. So... The jewelry has a negative 7%. I don't see anything um, in a positive way there. I don't see the the 10 year for that one because it's hidden by that one big uh, thing there says 13% growth in Hermes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, maybe because of uh, the the emotional Emotional uh, 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 sentiment behind this. Yes, I, I the sentimental value. Yeah. You say sentimental yeah. value. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I I don't think this is, this is a, a a good investment. You know, in my in my point of view, there there, there is another one that is not a that is not a product. Okay. But, uh, it's something like different and exotic for me. And uh, anyway, what is that? Bitcoin. <laughs> I saw an article just now tonight. I saw an article that said that um what is the name of uh Elon Musk company? Oh, uh Elon Musk, the Tesla. Uh, yeah, Tesla. Tesla. Tesla is making more money trading Bitcoin than they are making cars. It's crazy, man. That's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> so, because they bought a lot. Um in fact, mm-hmm. Elon Musk said, I want to be paid in Bitcoin. So he got a lot of Bitcoin. And so now mm-hmm. I guess uh, Tesla did, bought a lot too. And now they're trading and making money with the Bitcoins more than they are with making cars. That is absurd, but oh well. This is the way that it is, you know, because you don't want to have everything into one investment, you know? So it's good to diversify and have different mm-hmm. ways to, to look at things. But uh, this is a pretty cool list actually. To understand, yeah, you know, for sure. some possibilities and how to look at it, and to give a one-year and a ten-year um, uh, change in value of the asset. Okay, yeah. so really cool. I, I think this is a very good article to talk about. And yeah. I know that I have a collection of CDs, but it's not like yours—a thousand CDs, man. You spent a lot of money, <laughs> and, but I have the, the stamps and I have a few coins, but I don't have much for coins. It's just some coins. And I thought, I think it's pretty cool to look at the coins from around the world. You know, you look at the difference between the, yeah. the real and different coins from different countries like Turkey and Germany. I, I've got some old coins because I have German Deutschmarks. 
Okay. I have some yeah. old Deutschmarks because they don't exist anymore. That's old money. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, is there any value in old Brazilian money? What was it called? Cruzados? <laughs> <laughs> As a collector, maybe so. As a collector, because you have a collection of Cruzados and you have, you know, all the different values of the Cruzados and you have many of them. And so if somebody wants it for a collection that they have, they need to pay more than the value that it would be. Yeah, yeah awesome. for sure. For sure, for sure. So I think the takeaway here is uh, for whom uh, that decided to, to invest on this kind of uh, stuff, I think uh, it's quite important to be very resilient mm -hmm. and patient because, you know, it's necessary some time to like a, a paint, for example. I paint something, but, uh, you know, nowadays I'm just a uh, juvenile. So <laughs> 20 uh -huh. years ahead or 30 years ahead, maybe I become a celebrity. And, and a my rich paint man. will, yeah, my paint will worth a uh, million dollar or I don't know. So mm -hmm. for whom that uh, buy my paint, and uh, and bet that uh, okay, Juvenal will be a good artist in the future. Are so, you an artist right now? No, 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 uh, actually, not at all. <laughs> no, no, no. Have you ever made? Uh, have you ever uh, painted a painting? Uh, just, uh, just draw when I, I when I was, uh, you know, a kid, mm -hmm. just for fun. Uh, okay. not, uh, yeah, yeah. And I stopped it. Mm. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Well, good. It was good talking about this topic today. Something different for sure. Um, because we don't think about these types of investments every day. It's, it's something exotic. Okay. Yeah. When you, when you talk about investing money in a sense. So very good topic. And I appreciate you joining the show today, Juvenile. Appreciate it very much. And I look forward to our next show. Yeah, thank you to, to have me again. And uh, okay, everybody, stay safe. And uh, let's see us uh, in the next week. Very good. So, ladies and gentlemen, audience, we got, thank you for joining us today. This is Uncle Bruce and Juvenile saying goodbye from Simply Economics. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>